we will have a quick look at the quantitative chemistry side of the chemistry syllabus. Um, we will have a look through the various components of the section and I'll give you a few tips with regard to each section just to remember and go through when you answer questions that fall under the quantitative chem. So firstly, you need to know your polyatomic ions off by heart. This is a list of the polyatomic ions that you need to know. You need to know their chemical formula and you need to know what the chemical formula stands for in the naming. So firstly, you need to know your cyanide ion is CN minus. Remembering that your minus is, is an indication of your charge. So this would be one minus. Carbonate, you need to know is CO3 two minus. So two minus is your charge. Hydrogen carbonate, you need to know is HCO3 minus. ClO minus is hypochlorate, ClO3 minus is chlorate, CrO4 2 minus, you must know is chromate, Cr207 2 minus is dichromate, MnO4 minus is permanganate, NO2 minus nitrate. You need to know that your nit sorry, nitrite. You need to know that nitrate is then NO3 minus. Your phosphate is PO4 3 minus. Sulfite is SO3 2 minus. Sulfate is SO4 2 minus. Your hydrogen sulfate is simply with a hydrogen in the front, HSO4 2 minus. Theosulfate is S2O3 2 minus. Hydroxide, we will know from our acids base reactions, is OH minus. CH3COO minus is ethanoate. NH4 plus is ammonium. Your hydronium, you'll know from acids and bases, is H3O plus. And your ammonia is NH3. Now, you need to know that list off by heart. They will often give you a question where they'll say we are reacting sodium hydroxide and you need to know that sodium hydroxide is in Na, NaOH because you need to then balance your charges and you will only know that by studying this table and knowing that OH minus is your hydroxide ion. Cool, then when we look at balancing equations, we, they will often give you an unbalanced equation and ask you to balance it. You must just remember to ensure that you have equal number of moles on both sides of the equation. So, yeah, that's you just need to count up your moles on the left, count up your moles on the right, and ensure that each element of that equation is equal on both sides. Then, once you've got a balanced equation, you must always remember that your moles can be equated in your balanced equation. So, when you're dealing with mole ratios, you can use your mole ratios in a balanced equation. Then we look at concentration. They will, we know that concentration is equal to N over V, N being moles and V being volume. And we know that often they will try and trick us. They will give, it, give us our, our volume in milliliters. We must know to calculate that one milliliter equals one cubic centimeter. From there, we must know that a cubic centimeter divided by a thousand is a decimeter cubed. And we must always remember that in our concentration formula, our volume must always be in decimeters cubed. So if they give you milliliters, you must convert to centimeters cubed and then convert to decimeters cubed. And if you are given decimeters cubed, you must know that that is one liter. So if they were to say we have three liters, you must know that your volume is then three decimeters cubed. Then we look at a section which is very often tested in your exams and tests, and that is your limiting reagent. So if we look at something like this, where we have FeCl3 plus 3NaOH forming FeOH plus 3NaCl, and they tell us that we have one mole per decimeter cubed of this and 15 milliliters, and one mole per decimeter cubed of this, concentration and 30 milliliters. We then calculate how many moles we have of each of the reactants. It turns out that we have 0.015 moles of FeCl3 and 0.03 moles of NaOH. Now we know that the mole ratio, this is a balanced equation, so we can equate our moles. We have one mole to three moles. We then multiply it out. One of these would need three times it to react. We multiply this by 3 and we see that that would be 0 0.45 and we only have 0 point, sorry, 0 0.045 and we only have 0 0.03 of NaOH. Therefore, 
our NaOH is going to limit our reaction. Our FeCl3 will not be able to fully react because there is not enough NaOH to allow that reaction to take place. Therefore, NaOH is our limiting reagent and our FeCl3 is an excess reagent. Then we simply use our ratios now. We now work with our limiting reagent being NaOH and we want to work out how much FeOH we will form. We use mole ratios. We have a 3 to 1. So we go 3 to 1. We've got 0 0.03 and we're gonna, we've got 3 to 1. So we're going to divide by our 3 and we get that we get 0 0.1 moles of FeOH. So that is our limiting reagent section and it's very often tested and sometimes they may not even ask you to find the limiting reagent. You must always check which is the limiting reagent unless it's obviously stated. Then percentage composition. If you're given something like H2SO4 and they ask you for percentage composition, you're simply going to take the mass in one mole of this. So your mass of H2 in one mole is two grams. Your mass of S in one mole is 32 grams, simply off your periodic table. Your mass of oxygen in one mole is 64 grams and your mass of one mole of H2SO4 is 98 grams. Then you simply divide your mass of each substance by your total mass and you will get a percentage of the composition of that particular element in your H2SO4. When you look at your empirical formula, this is when they will tell you how your, how your H2SO4 is made up in this example. Then you'll simply go in 100 grams because we are equating that to 100%. Then we know that our mass is 2.04, 32.65, and 65.131, sorry. And we will simply work out our moles by using N equals M over MR, so our mass over our molar mass, mass over molar mass, and mass over molar mass. And we, we then get, we get 2.04 moles of H, 1.02 moles of S, and 4.08 moles of O, oxygen. We divide by our smallest to get a ratio of 1. So we divide by 1.02 to get 1. We divide by 1.02 to get 2.04. Sorry, 2.04 by 1.02 to get 2. 4.08 divided by 1.02 to get 4. And therefore, our empirical formula gives us a ratio of 1 to 2 to 4. Therefore, we know it's H2 because we have 2 in our, in our H2SO4. 2 H's shown by our ratio. We have 1 S shown in our, in our H2SO4, and we have four oxygen shown by our ratio, therefore O4.